As an eye doctor, it's a great privilege and honour to have patients entrust their care of their eyes and their health in my hands. And I'd like to share with you a story of one of my patients that I operated on recently. She was a young lady in her 20s. Suddenly she developed floaters and blurring of vision in one of her eyes and she came urgently to see me. She had a retinal detachment. Retinal detachment is one of the most serious eye conditions you can have. It's really an ocular eye emergency where the nerves at the back of your eye separates off like wallpaper and you lose your vision progressively. In the past, it was untreatable, but thankfully due to modern technology, it's something we can treat. So she underwent surgery and recovered well. And towards the end of her care with me, she asked me, Doctor, it's been very traumatic for me. I'm a busy young lady, I take care of my health. Why did I get this condition? And I explained to her, well, like many of us in the room, myself and many of you, you're myopic. We wear glasses to see. But her myopia was much higher than normal. It was about a thousand degrees or minus 10 diopters. She then asked, what was it I could do to prevent it from happening when I was younger? And how can I prevent it happening to my children? And that's what I'd like to share with you today. What you see here is a picture of a chicken with glasses on. It's more of a teaser that will come later and I'll explain to you how chickens play an important role in the understanding of myopia or short sight. What is myopia? Myopia is basically the inability to see far. We need glasses, contact lenses to see far. And why is that? Is that your eyeball is normally round, but as you get older, it gets progressively longer and longer, and light rays are not able to focus on the back of your eye clearly. And you have to wear glasses. It's a major problem all over the world. It's the biggest optical problem we have, which is why you see spectacles, shops, and optometries on every road in Malaysia. More than one billion people worldwide are myopic. What you see here is a picture of young people from China. 40 years ago in China, only 10% of the population was myopic. In just one generation, more than 80% of the population are now wearing glasses. And this is a trend seen all over Asia. This graph shows the population of 20 year olds requiring glasses from 1950 right up to the present day. And what you see is an exponential increase in the rates of myopia in Asia, and this is seen worldwide. It is a frightening statistic. What causes myopia? Does anyone know who this group of people are? Why have I put that picture there? These are the Eskimos. They live in Greenland, near the North Pole. And the reason why I put them there is because the Eskimo people have no reported rates of myopia. They live in a very harsh outdoor environment. For their dinner, they have to go and hunt for seals or polar bears or fish. If they don't get anything, they'll be hungry. Perfect eyesight is essential for survival in areas like the North Pole. Both my parents wear glasses. So a lot of people said, well, it's inevitable that you're going to wear glasses. So there's a factor of genetic component there. I read a lot of books when I was young. So no surprises, I'm a bookworm. So I ended up wearing glasses. I did my share of outdoor exercise, but I wasn't the star football player in my school. So is it true? Is that what caused the myopia in myself and many of us in this room? If you go to the Greenland today, you'd be very surprised. Many of the Eskimo people wear glasses. They no longer need to hunt for seals. They just need to go to McDonald's down the road. They no longer need to go outdoors. They just stay indoors and play, play their computer games and watch television. Myopia has even spread to the North Pole. Back to our chicken. 
When we look at science, we have to understand how a condition develops, and we often look for animal models. The chicken is a perfect animal model for myopia. What scientists in Germany have done is they've fitted special goggles to these chickens, and from birth, they are bred under specific lighting conditions. We can then control and measure the axial length, the length of the eyeball, which determines how much myopia they get. When they brought chicks up under intra infrared light, very similar to the conditions of this call today, they found that these chicks developed myopia at a humongous rate. They became short-sighted. If they switched it round and brought up those chicks under ultraviolet light, the opposite occurred. They did not develop myopia. As you know, if you go outdoors, ultraviolet light is a predominant wavelength outdoors. So there was a very strong evidence to show that ambient light and light exposure at young influences the growth of our eyeballs. How does that work? When our eyeballs get exposed to ultraviolet light, there's a release of a neurotransmitter called dopamine. You might have heard this before. Dopamine is a feel-good uh, factor in our bodies, which is why after we come back from holidays on the beach, we feel good. We've had a lot of rest and lots of dopamine. Dopamine is a factor that prevents axial length elongation in the eyeball. Again, the very same scientists tested this hypothesis by injecting a dopamine antagonist or blocker called periperone into the eyeballs of these very chicks. And what happened? Despite exposing these chicks to ultraviolet light, they developed myopia. Beautiful pictures. When we are born, we are born almost perfect. Our eyeballs at birth are almost spherical, round, and babies almost never require glasses to see. However, because of our modern environment and the pressure that our children undergo, we are sending our children to nursery and kindergarten and subjecting them to near work activities at a younger and younger age. By the time they're seven years old and they enter standard one, a large proportion will already be myopic. As they con continue on in a traditional Asian academic education system, the pressure increases, the homework increases, and the myopia increases. If you go to our local universities nowadays, more than 80% of the undergraduates will be wearing glasses. So does that mean that mere work that we do when we're young contributes to the myopia? Is this really the case? This is a very important study. Professor Catherine Rose in 2008 from Sydney published this paper in a very prestigious journal. What she did was very good. She looked at six-year-old children of Chinese descent in Sydney and compared them to six-year-old children of Chinese descent in Singapore. And they followed them up over two years. They looked at what they ate, how many books they read, how many hours a day they watched television, how many hours a day they spent outdoors, many other things. And after two years, they measured the rates of myopia in these children. The results were staggering. In Sydney, only 3% of the children that were followed up developed myopia. Whereas in Singapore, by 8 years of age, 30% of the children studied developed myopia. You might be surprised to know that Sydney school children read more books and spent more time on television than children in Singapore. But what was greatly different was that the Sydney school children spent more than 13 hours a week outdoors compared with a sad three hours a week in Singapore. This is one of the most convincing pieces of epidemiological evidence to suggest that outdoor activities is a major protective factor against myopia in childhood. Hmm. Of course, can you expect children in Malaysia to spend 13 hours a week outdoors? It's hot lag, or mosquito lag, homework, or tuition class. So in China, in Guangzhou, they've come up with a very innovative solution. They've built glass house-like classrooms which allow natural light to stream into the classroom while the students do their work. And they found that by children studying in this environment had reduced rates of myopia compared to children who didn't. But can you imagine 
in a tropical climate like Malaysia, trying to build a glass house classroom. Imagine how much electricity we have to spend on air conditioning. It's not practical. Are there low-cost solutions? Well, the Taiwanese have come up with something very innovative. When it comes to recess time, they lock the doors of the classroom and do not allow the children to go back in. Our Asian children are very interesting. They don't like going outdoors. Even during recess time, they prefer to sit in the classroom and have their snacks. By increasing 80 minutes a day of outdoor activities in Taiwanese children, within a year, there was a 20% reduction in myopia of these children compared to the neighbouring school. Again, conclusively showing the protective effect of outdoor activities. Now, how bright do you need to be? What if you switch on every single light in this hall? Would you all be protected from myopia? I'm sorry, the answer is no. The maximum luminance or lux you can get in a hall of this size is about 1,000. What you need is 10,000 lux outdoors before you get a protective effect. 10,000 lux is equivalent to being outdoors at 1 o'clock in the afternoon in KL under a shade with your sunglasses on. So it doesn't have to be very bright, and you do not have to be under direct sunlight. That is what is required and is recommended three hours a day. Very difficult to achieve, but something for us to think about. Is myopia dangerous? I mean, all of us wear glasses or contact lenses and can see perfectly well. The problem is, if you get more than six diopters or 600 degrees of myopia, your eyeball is much longer than normal and you're at high risk of these blinding conditions. Retinal detachment, like my patient, glaucoma, cataract, and macular degeneration. Can myopia be cured? What if I do LASIK? I don't have to wear glasses, right? I'm sorry. LASIK only treats the front of your eye. You lift the flap up on the cornea, you do a laser ablation, change the shape of the cornea, you can see perfectly. We can even put special contact lenses inside your eye permanently to correct your myopia. But the rest of your eyeball, especially the retina in the back, remains the same. And the risk of retinal detachment, cataract, glaucoma, and macular degeneration remains as high as before. Prevention remains the biggest and the best option for this. How many of you have checked your WhatsApp and Facebook while I've been talking? Own up. <laughs> I can see some of you. I can see the lights. Yes, our smart devices. We are addicted to them, right? One of the necessities of life is air, water, food, and Wi-Fi. <laughs> no Wi-Fi, we are in trouble. We spend more than 10 hours a day glued to our devices. In China and South Korea, they have special rehabilitation centers set up for smartphone addiction. These children have to be torn away from their devices because of the severe problems they're causing. The American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends that children below the age of two should not be exposed to any of these tablet devices. It is a serious disease as a cause of depression, anxiety, personality disorders, lack of attention, obesity, and myopia. So, if there's one take-home message, if Mark Zuckerberg is reading this or watching this now, please, please, on your Facebook and WhatsApp, put an alert every half an hour to shut the program off and make us go out. Thank you, Mark. So what can we do? Just to recap, reduce time watching tablet devices, reduce time on the TV, spend more time outdoors. For yourself, it's good for your health. If you have children, it's good for them. Very good evidence for that. In Singapore, it's such a big problem. They spend billions of dollars to do, deal with this problem because 90% of our Singaporean neighbours are now myopic. It's a huge issue. If one of their pilots' contact lenses falls off, big problem. 
So what's the mantra then? Keep myopia away. Go outside and play. That's everywhere. All the posters everywhere. Good news also. You don't like exercise outdoors, you can put eye drops. Low dose atropine eye drops can slow progression of myopia, but it's not a cure. Be careful with wearing contact lenses in your eyes overnight because it can be a source of infection. So, in the last 15 minutes, I hope I've shared with you some thoughts to bring home about what we can do today. I have three young children and they are not yet my okay. I'm very grateful for that. What I've done is we try our best to take them out of the house an hour a day to the park, anywhere. Having a pet dog helps because it makes you want to, you have to take them out for walks at least twice a day. Fresh air is good. Dealing with the mosquitoes, yes, we put lots of mosquito repellent. We just have to deal with it. On our part, that's what we can do. We can lobby local governments and federal governments to improve our parks and public spaces. Make it clean, safe, and free of mosquitoes. And I'm sure all of us will be happy to go and spend some time outdoors. My mother, who's in the audience today, used to tell me when I was a child, don't keep watching TV, go outside and play. How right she was. Thank you very much.